Hello. Now I'm not wearing this hemp robe that I made to try to impress anybody. I know someone's going to think that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about this book and a couple things afterwards on an education. I've kind of spoken about this before and I could do it in a very simple, short little video succinctly. I wrote the introduction to this book. By the way, many, many months ago, I was compensated for the introduction to this book. <coughs> Excuse me, but any sales of this book do not go to me, okay? I'm saying that because I don't want anybody to think that I'm promoting a book to get any kickback. Uh, I have a link to this book uh, below, The Monad. It's 816 pages. I'd like to talk about it here in a second. I'd like to talk about an education. Uh, very quickly, but any sales of this book don't go towards me, you know. Just because I'm promoting something doesn't mean, you know, I'm getting anything off of the sales of that. So I just really had to point that out because it's quite important and you can't trust anybody on the internet. It's, uh, you know, gotten that bad as we all very well know. So that's why I wanted to greatly emphasize that point. And they're limited it to 2,000 copies. I have a few copies and I'm giving away four copies. Those were given to me um, for free. Um, but I wrote the introduction many months ago. Um, I have uh, two copies myself, one behind me and the one here that I've uh, been through many times. But they've sold about uh, 500 plus copies, so they only have 1,500 left. It is printed on acid-free paper. It's a hard cover with cloth boards, the dimensions of 9 by 6 inches. Like I said, 816-page account. The actual cloth boards uh, feature a gold foiling. Uh, I got a lot of books. I know quality books. Uh, I definitely know quality books. Here you go, right here. I think the uh, press is in uh, Canada. Um, as I recall, yeah, it is printed in Canada. That's what I thought. Um, I forget who actually uh, printed it. Of course, it's uh, published by Galloway Books, and I have uh, the link below. I um, wanted to talk about a couple things. Um, this is one of those books, too, where you can actually uh, you know, close your eyes and turn to any section you like and people like that they've told me that like a book you're not you know you have to earmark the page not that that's very difficult and you have to remember everything you read before that and you have to have this entire plot line where everything flows and everything else this book is not like that it actually contains in the contents the Aeneids of Plotinus translated by Thomas Taylor everything in here is translated by Thomas Taylor I uh, have written the introduction I like to read a paragraph from that here, um, the two most important, well actually three most important sections to me are the Aeneids of Plotinus within this and um, the Cave of the Nymphs uh, by Porphyry and uh, the Elements of uh, Theology uh, by Proclus. Um, I'm trying to remember, and I wrote it, I don't know on the, this particular edition, I think it's like uh, what, uh, uh, in the introduction is uh, what, uh, 14 pages on my Microsoft Word document, it was like uh, 15 uh, pages. Um, the last thing I actually ended up with in the introduction is mono pros monon, which means from the one to the one, or from the divine to the divine, but just one simple paragraph. Because there's a lot of translations by uh, various translators, um, you know, of uh, Plotinus, Proclus, Numenius, Plato, Sidianus, Aristotle, on and on and on. And I have most of them, and they're really quite superficial, and they're not very good. Um, the most uh, complete translation is nowhere near as good as Thomas Taylor's translation, and that's by H. Armstrong, and he's considered a scholar. And I have his book, uh, The Aeneas of Plotinus, but you know, even though the guy's a scholar, for example, there is just an enormous amount of stuff that is very poorly mistranslated. You could be hyper-analytical and uh, do things super precisely, um, but if you miss the essence of what is being said, then it's a poor translation. As a translator, I myself uh, from uh, Koine Greek and uh, more specifically, mostly, uh, from ancient Pali. That's incredibly important. You can have the best translator ever, but if they don't actually understand what's being said, Thomas Taylor, for example, is the most prolific uh, ancient Greek translator. He, his, him and his wife would actually uh, have daily conversations, you know, over breakfast and whatnot in uh, ancient Greek. 
and uh, there is no, I think I mentioned Benjamin Jowett, A.H. Armstrong, on and on and on, and none of them, you know, came within a million miles of Thomas Taylor and his proficiency. Not only was the most prol prolific uh, translator, he's also, too, the most accurate. In my little introduction here on the countless uh, lessers after Thomas Taylor, it's been accurately stated by many, a true metaphysician and perennialist philosopher, that you cannot convey or translate anything, as I have stated likewise on many occasions, without having a, both a, a tight grasp of the content and a core conviction of the teachings. I am qualified, too, and do affirm that those since Thomas Taylor, nearly all, in fact, almost entirely, actually, have uh, dry academic uh, translations, both materialistic, sophistic, and even worst uh, presumed uh, translations, which are both incredibly inconsistent and untrue to the original meaning and intent. Everything is, of course, about conveying meaning, and you have to be able to do that. And Thomas Taylor is head and shoulders above the rest on uh, that front. Um, the importance of Thomas Taylor's translations cannot be... Uh, um, overstated. Um, like I said acid-free paper, 816 pages. The book costs 60 bucks and uh, it's uh, available from Galloway Books on the link that I have below. Um, actually I'd like to, my favorite section uh, of course is the Enneads, but the next favorite section to me is on the Homeric uh, Cave of the Nymphs uh, by Porphyry. It's actually hard to get a, a hold of this and it's the whole uh, metaphysical symbolism of the Cave of the Nymphs, which is kind of parallel to, uh, it, it's, they refer to Plato's cave, but it's actually far more ancient. A lot of stuff attributed to Plato, uh, like the Parmenides, the Timaeus, the divided line section, of which there's an incredible secret therein that I've written about endlessly, and uh, so-called Plato's cave are not uh, created uh, by Plato, they're far more ancient than that. The Tamias, for example, and the Parmenides are infinitely more archaic. I encountered the same thing in ancient Pali, uh, like the Sudanapada Udana and Iributaka and Samyuna Nikaya Book One, Sagatavaga Pali, are incredibly ancient, archaic, a completely far more ancient and archaic form of Pali than the rest, which is infinitely more easy to translate. And the same is true in the Greek as what I experienced on a much a larger basis in ancient Pali. Um, once again, I was compensated many months ago for the introduction, but I'm not compensated for any sales of the book. Um, this is the type of stuff that I mean and talk about for superior education. Uh, you and I all went to the same, I don't care if it was Europe, the United States, went to the same places and got the same regurgitative uh, discourse. You know, go home and memorize chapters 1 through 10, we're going to have a multiple guest test. That does not build a toolbox within your mind so that you can be able to process information correctly, see through lies and fallacies and uh, synthesize spontaneous thought genesis that reading stuff, anybody who actually... Uh, made uh, magical works of authorship, of incredible wisdom. I'm not talking about flowery books that everybody loves, like Dante's Inferno or, you know, books that people love. I'm talking about books of incredible condensed wisdom that are very, very good for you to read. They all had the same education. If you're super rich, you know, your kid got an education, just like... Um, um, Alexander the Great, studied at the, the feet of uh, Aristotle, is that you got a toolbox built within your mind of the ability to synthesize and create and dissect and understand what's being said. Regurgitation and memorization is not important. The ability to see through things and understand things and recognize fallacies is incredibly important. So this is the type of uh, stuff that I refer to about a superior education, a real education. You have to actually have a mental toolbox and ability to dissect and build things. Uh, you know, it's the distinction between having a list in your head that you've memorized versus a toolbox in your head where you could tear things apart and see it for what it truly is. You know, tear down the facade or if you want to build something to do that. By the way, also too, I don't ever mention this hardly ever. I have a link to... All my books and articles that I write are free, and that's in the description below. They're completely free. Any donation is always uh, warmly uh, welcome. 
uh, very much so, especially these days where everybody is uh, so tight, which I know they are. Um, but this is a super high quality book, not only manufactured, but the contents within are pure gold. And since I'm not being compensated for any sales of this book, I actually truly do mean that. Um, so that's the Monad. Uh, Acid-free paper printed in Canada, 816 pages, uh, cloth boards with uh, gold foiling. And there are less than 1,500 copies left of this. And uh, super high quality book. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, it's a short little video. At least it was meant to be a short little video. And you can get it on Galloway Books below and also, too, have a pinned comment uh, to where to get the book also. But uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, have a lovely week. And I'll see you in live stream. I'll actually bring uh, this book with me to live stream and talk about it if anybody has any questions. I've already had a lot of people order it. And I've had an enormous response from people that have ordered it. And, uh, you know, they're incredibly happy and they greatly appreciate the introduction that I wrote for this book. And uh, thank you so much. Have a lovely week. And I'll catch you in the live stream. Okay? Thank you.